Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Base Row on Portainer. So, um, this will be on the Portainer stacks, which is Docker Compose underneath. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And, let's get started. I'm going to start on the Big Bear Video Asset. There will be a link down in the YouTube description for it. So I'm going to go to how to install base row on Portainer. And then I'm going to do go to Docker Compose uh, base row right here. And then I'm going to explain it. So version 3 of Docker Compose will be used. And then we're going to set some services. And then the service underneath the services is called base row. And then we're going to set a container name. So this will be the name of the container. And that will call that will be called base row and then we're going to need to download an image from docker hub and you know it's docker hub because there's no url before this so it's automatically coming from docker hub and then we're going to set a version tag of 1.20.0 so now um this you will get it uh you might have a newer version that is available so you'll copy this and then you'll go to Docker Hub, and then you'll see if there's a new, newer tag. So we're going to set some environment variables. So we're going to set base row public URL. And then we're going to need to set our portainer's IP address here. And then 7300 will be going to the 80 port right here in the, uh, in the container. So we're going to map some ports from the ho host machine to the container. So it's going to be 7300 to 80. So and set, set 7301 to 443. So this is on the host side. If you do have a port conflict, you can change this. And then you cannot change the container's port though. Okay, now we're going to define some uh, volumes. So data, base row data is on the host side. And in the container side is base row data. So these will sync back and forth. So now I'm going to go up here to copy raw file. And I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this installed. So now I'm going to start on the portainer's dashboard. I'm going to go to home. Go to local. And then I'm going to go to stacks down here. And then add a stack up here. And then I'm going to name my stack base row stack. And then I'm going to paste what I copied over in Big Bear Video Assets. I'm going to go ahead and change the portainer's IP address right here to my IP address on the portainer. So you'll have to put your IP address of what you have for your portainer in there. And then now everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy the stack right here. This will take a bit because it's got to download a base row, base row from Docker Hub. Now, should be getting close to finish. I wish on Portainer they actually showed you what it was actually doing. Okay, now it's successfully started and deployed. So we're going to go into stacks. And then you can see it's still starting. You can go in editor right here. And you can edit this. And then you can update the stack. Now, if, uh, if you want to download a whole new image and redeploy it, you can select it here. And then if the developer updates this image tag, 1.2. 2.0.0, then this will download the update from do, 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 Docker Hub and repla uh, replace your locally cached image. So, now if we go into container, we should see it's running, and we do. 
You can go into logs here and you can see that it is started up, so it should be good to go. And um, you can go you can go down here and you can see all the ports that, that are mapped. So 7301 is 443 and then 7300 is 80. And then if you scroll down, you can see the binds, which are the volumes. And then there you go. And then it also created a network down here that you can see. So now I'm going to show you where your files are located that you created with the volume. So I'm going to go into my LXC and then console. And then I'm going to um, CD into data. And then I'm going to CD into base row and then data again. And then now you should be able to see all your files. So you do now. So you can do, you can do this if you have Portainer installed on another system by just SSHing into that system and then doing this exact way. This is just what Proxmox gives you. Uh, you, you can access the uh, terminal from actually the browser. So uh, with this, uh, this makes it really easy to back up and restore. So uh, just make sure you have all this da data and you can uh, get it restored. And also you can ch change data in here. Um, so if you have to. So uh, this makes it really easy to see all your files that are actually in ba a base row. So that's how to see all the files. So now we're going to set up the base row UI. So I'm going to go to my... IP address for my portainer and then I'll, I'll put 7300 because that's the port to go to 80 uh, in, in the container so I'm gonna press return or enter and go to this and you can now uh, see that you can sign up for an account so I'm gonna sign up for an account and then I'm gonna put a name in there and then I'm gonna put a password in there uh, make sure you remember these cr credentials because this is what you'll need to sign in with so once you do all that, I'm gonna sign up right here. And here you go, it created your workspace. Um, you can go in here and you can create more databases. So you can go testing database and then add one. And then now you can have tables underneath this to where um, you can have the user tables, and then you can put Jane in here, and then John, and then there you go. You can uh, see how you change the data in these tables. You can also add more columns, and then now you can go in here. You can have uh, a view the API docs, rename, duplicate, snapshots, view the trash, and delete. You can go ahead and just delete this one. And then now you can go up here to the trash and you can see and you can restore it. And you can also go into the admin panel and you can have set a settings for allow creating new accounts, allow resetting password, allow everyone to create new workspaces. You can do a grace a delay on the, um, uh, if they don't sign into their account, it's deletion and then track a workspace usage. You can enable and disable that. You can also have health checks to where it'll check if all the services that are inside the container are working correctly. And you can add a license if you have the pro version. You can see notifications. You can invite other users to the system. Then you can see the members and you can invite them from here too. You can go ahead and, and um, go into the different databases right here you uh you can't see an audit log because that's advanced or enterprise so um and then you can go up here and you can go to settings and you can ch uh, change your name for your user account you can change the interface the language that you are on you can go ahead and um, put your old password in or your new password and your repeat new password and that changes your password and then you just change it right here you can go in and uh, see how you want your email notifications, instant, uh, daily, weekly, never. You can also create database tokens and then you can delete your account. So um, that's how to get base row working on Portainer. 
So I just went over step by step on how to get base row running on Portainer. Um, this is a really cool program that makes it to where you can hook into the API and uh, be able to change the data on the UI, plus get the data into a UI that you make or something like that. So, uh, if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or need support, you can go you can go down the YouTube description and join our Big Bear community. It's a Discord. So, stay tuned for more.